Okay, um, let's go on to 240. That's um, board. Um, so what we have here, again, I'm sure you've looked at the question. Um, board manufactures two products, and it says that they've changed from absorbing based on units. So they've take, they'll get their overhead, which is... Um, we can, oops, sorry. We can see that the the let's just do this slowly. Jumps a lot. We can see the total overheads is this thing here, three hundred and seventy-one, and they would divide it and spread it based on the number of units produced. So they're thinking we we have a better method. So they give us the usual information to make each unit. You need four hours of labor, three hours of labor here. That's the annual output. They give that to us and they tell us the drivers. So it's again just quickly getting the total of these drivers so we can find, if you like, the, and we're given the related costs, if you like, to the drivers. And then we can work from there. And, and I think that's always the first step. So I've put everything again on a spreadsheet. Um, and you might arrange yours differently. There isn't a particular one way to do it. Um, so you have here for each unit, Desk requires four labor hours. Else requires three. This is the annual output, if you like. And um, here are the labor hours given to us. This is given to us in the um, in the question. I don't because I haven't. I don't think I've calculated it. Let me just check. Um, here we are. Oh, I think I have. I think I've done the first calculation. That's my first calculation. I just did that. I think, if, so if I look here, yes, yeah, so that's, so I've said, well, if the annual output is 1,500, um, direct labor hours is four times that, giving 6,000. So that's the total labor hours that we have in this, in this business. They're not using labor hours currently. They're using just number of units produced. So that's my total of my total labor hours. Then I have my orders. This is given to us, if I remember. Yes, this is given to us, the orders and the setups. And so, as, as like I said, you have to, what you're trying to do is to find the total so you can then spread the overhead by that, by those totals. So what do we see? Um, purchasing related costs um, would be to do with purchase orders. <coughs> Excuse me would be to do with purchase orders. So we see here that we have purchasing related cost of 142,500 here. And we have um, the total number of orders here. So the question here is, what is the, if you like, the purchase cost per order? That's what we're trying to do. And so when you divide this thing that we're given by the total number of orders, you will get 300, right? That's B12. Yes, you can see that in your... You can sort of see that. Let me just make that so you can see the numbering. B12 um, by the number of orders. And then the setups, when you divide the total by the number of setups by 125, you see that you get your 250. And in terms of the other costs, the question here is, with the other costs, um, we, we know, to be fair, the best... I think they tell us that it is labor hours, but really... You almost have to go with that. You almost have to know, well, I can't use um, orders and I can't use setups. Um, let me just look at the question because did these slightly in packs, so to speak. I did the whole thing and then just don't want to assume that I know it. Um, how do I... Yes, others... Mm. Yeah, so I mean, really, I guess the question is finding a good enough driver um, to go with to, to argue for being the cause of that and i would i would yeah i would i would argue that you would go with the labor hours as the driver of those other overheads it's much better than going with units so um given that you've done all that so you can see here um that's the other other indirect costs and we could argue that labor drive hours are really the driver here you have 16.5 and so we're on our way we're pretty much done now um, so let's look at the question. Let's look at the question. So the question says to us that, um, the first question says, <clears throat> oh, it's from theory. Which two, which two, um, of the following statements about ABC are correct? Um, ABC can only be used to analyze the past, not to make decisions, um, about the, about the future. No, this is not this is not true. Um, 
ABC can be used to make decisions about the future. This is definitely, in fact, we use it a lot to make decisions about the future. It's all about making using information in the past and then using it in the future. The benefits will always outweigh the cost. We know that's not quite true. Sometimes it might be very expensive to implement, which naturally leaves you with the last two. ABC can be used within both service and manufacturing industries. That's very true. In fact, it is the birth of the service industry and high automation that has led to the development of the ABC. And ABCs have less benefit if the majority of the costs of a by organization are variable costs. Strong assumption here, the variable costs are related to the volume, which is usually and typically the case. So the more you're making of something, there is a strong argument that it is traditional costing would apply just as well because the overhead has been driven by volume. So the last two, the last two are correct. The last two are correct here. Um, Whoops, why that ju does jump quite a bit. Let's look at the next one. The following statements about ABC have been made about ABC and um, about ABC and cost drivers. Right, so um, here what we're looking at is a situation <clears throat> where we're saying in addition to estimating more accurately the true cost of production, ABC will give a better indication of where cost savings can be made. I mean, we, if we can see the drivers and we can manage those, then yes. So the whole thing about ABC is, is finding the cause, almost like a cause and effect, or if you like, cause and defect, so to speak. We can trace the cause and work on the cause. So one is definitely true. Traditional absorption costs tends to under-allocate overheads to low-volume products. Well, that's true. Traditional absorption costs is about volume. It's about giving the person with a bigger volume the greater overhead. So... so um, what is true here? One and two are both. One and two are both true. So the answer is C. Then they ask us to do some calculation. Finally, under AB, using ABC, what is the overhead cost for each unit of LC of else? So let's come back to our slide and do this. What is the overhead cost of this thing? So I know what the I now ha I have my overhead absorption rates sitting here. I just need to apply them. So in terms of um, orders, I have 275 orders, and I know what the cost is of each order. So I literally multiply the two together, which is what you see over here. So you see me multiplying D12, 300, by the number of orders, C7, and I have the total. So I have to find the total and divide. My aim is to find the total of all the overheads and divide by the output, by the annual output. Then my next step is to deal with these setups. So I know what the cost is of each setup, and I have my number of setups. So 15,000 is pretty much this D13 times C8, if you like, and that's 15,000. And again, I have my total number of labor hours. I know what the cost is of each one, £16.50, and that's what you see me doing over there, D14 times C6, and I have 99,000. So I add all of this together, which is 196,500. And then what do I simply do? Well, I have an annual output of 2,000. So therefore, I divide all of that by the 2,000. So I can find out what the, if you like, the overhead cost is per um, for each one. And that's how I get my 40. So the question is asking, using ABC, what is the overhead cost per unit? And that, if you like, is how we arrive at that. Right, so find... you. Key point, always get here. Get here and then apply them and then divide the, your totals by the total annual output. Right, let's look at the next um, the next question. The next question says, um, if BAUD changes change to ABC, the overhead cost would be 116. This is the overhead cost of desk. What is the purchase order cost unit included in here? It simply just wants to understand how we would find the purchase order. What is the purchase order issue case? Well, let's look at the purchase order case. It's 300. The purchase related is 300 um, for each. And for DEST, there are 200, if you like, setups. Sorry, um, purchase orders. So you can sort of see what I'm doing here. I do it here, I believe. Um, sorry, forgive me. One second. I think I've misled you there with my earlier question. So my earlier question was 196. I had my total and then 196 divided by C5. So my answer was £98.25 for the earlier one. Apologies, I don't know what I was doing there because I'm doing all these questions together. So I have, so for the first part of that, for number three, my answer was £98.25, wasn't it? Yes. 
because that was F16 divided by um, 6,000. So that's that, and I have 98 pound 25. The second question here is this question of just focusing on the um, on DEST and focusing on the purchasing purchase order element of that. And well, simply, I have a case of um, purchase order 300, and you have 200. So you have um, D12 times B7, which is the total number of orders. And I'm just going to divide that by the annual output, which is 1,500. I just want to know, I just want to spread, I just want to see what the purchase order element is of that overhead, because I can tell you the total, which is the D12, which is the 300 for each order. There are 200 orders, so multiply the two together, and then divide by the total annual output, and you have 40. You have that. And then finally, the, so the answer there is 40. The answer there is 40 for, so it's 98.5 here and 40 here. And then this last question here tells you to go ahead and look at the decrease compared to the current labor absorption. So let's look at the current labor absorption system. If I'm looking at the current labor absorption system, I have a total cost of 371. Those are my total labor hours. So I'll, I'll first of all find what my overhead is per per labor hour, right? Because that's what it's telling me to do. So that's what I've done over here. I've said 371,750 divided by um, by this total labor hours of 12,000. So that's what you see me doing over here. 371 divided by, by D6, right? And I get 30. So it's, that's the cost per labor hour. The question is, well, how many labor hours do we have here? Well, my labor hours in... Um, what am I doing? I am looking at est or zest? Um, dest. I'm looking at dest. So for dest, well, it's 6,000 hours. So I'm going to multiply this thing times 6,000 and divide by the entire output, right? Because I'm trying to find it per unit. So that's what you see me doing here. I say, well, um, F2230 times 6,000 divided by 1,500, and I have 123. So this is the current method using labor hours. This is what the activity-based method is, and they're asking me for the difference. So I've subtracted the two to arrive at 7.08, and therefore um, have, they have 0 of 7.09, so the answer is B. Cool, great stuff. So that's the, that's the question um, 200 about, question 240.